Hello, hello, and welcome to the Astral Traveler with me, Greta. And what you guys were listening to was Patience by Nas and Damon Marley. Um, I would like to say thank you for all the listeners and all the new listeners and friends I've made. And the response has been wonderful and very humbling. Um, I enjoy talking to each one of you and trying to help everybody uh, achieve the ability to astral travel. Um, I had a few questions that people wrote down for me, um, and I'll address them now. Uh, I had Norseman, and Norseman wrote me, and he said, what types of work are best done on the etheric or astral plane? Well, the etheric and astral plane is basically the same thing. It's one in itself. Um, what work can be done? Anything your heart can imagine, whatever your your mind can come up with can be done on the astral plane, whether it's magic, whether it's uh, manifestation, anything you can manifest there and bring it over here, anything, anything can be done on the astral plane. Um, and I have another thing I would like to talk about, uh, and this will go out to all the whistleblowers out there um, that are in living in fear. Their lived fear of the powers to be, wanting them dead or wanting to get rid of them. My advice to you is, you know, prepare yourself and uh, and learn how to astral project and astral travel and manifest on that side and become the God that you truly are. Because once you manifest on the astral plane and you regain your power and your knowledge, they will leave you alone. Like I said, people ask me, aren't you afraid? Am I afraid if I die tomorrow, I'll be more freaking hell for them on the other side than I would be on this side. This side, we're in our space suits. We only have 24 hours in a day. You know, we have limited time. So they're best to keep us on this side. <laughs> they don't want that I want to build an army, an army of interdimensional warriors that's able to master the astral plane because we'll be more trouble over there. Like how we're in spacesuits here, they're in their spacesuits there. That's why when you're on the astral plane and they attack you, they can only attack you physically. So people say, well, why don't we kill them over there? Why? There's no need to kill them. You are so powerful. Just because you have the ability to kill something, why would you do it? Just them knowing that you have that ability to manifest over there and believe me will come over here. The more people that are waking up and master in that astral side in, in the spiritual realm, that's all that's needed to, to conquer them. We don't have to kill them. We don't have to do anything. Just them knowing that we know that we are the gods that can create and manifest. And we have the ability to squash them. But because we're spiritual, we do not. That's our choice. And that's what they don't have. Whether people said thousands of years ago they took that part out of themselves where they're more intellectual and they kind of erased the emotional and spiritual aspect of them, or they're not ready to evolve to that spiritual level. Either or, it doesn't make a difference. Like I say, once you're over there and you realize the power and you're able to to master the astral plane and go and, and, and manifest things, they're like a freaking roach. You could just step on them. And that's when they'll realize with so many people waking up, they'll notice that. And we realize that they're not a factor. They're nothing to be scared of. Believe me, they'll go away. So there's no point. I had a friend ask me, well, why don't you go and do a ritual binding spell of magic, you know, and bind them on their plane? I'm like, why would I? That's a third dimensional thought. If I, The reason why I do magic and rituals on this plane is that I try to harness that energy coming from these different um, interdimensional and focus, focusing it on a specific task where why would you need to do that on that side? You know, 
And once you experience that astral and that true power that you have over there, you'll realize that that's all that's needed is that you just being aware of what you can do and not doing it. That's the, that, that's the true power that you're aware of, that you can wipe them out with the instant thought. But you don't have to do that because they don't matter. And that was my main message um, for that. Also, you know, I have, you know, I, I always tell people, you know, to try. It's not going to be the first time that you're just going to be able to go to bed and wake up and astral project. It might take a few times. But the suggestions I have always is try to go to sleep as close to daybreak as possible. Or when you go to sleep, set your alarm, wake yourself up about 3 a.m., and then fall back to sleep. These are just... These are just the times where it's easier for your body to astral project. It seems like in the wee hours of the morning, it's time. Um, we Do we have uh, any callers or any questions? Just show the caller the phone number before tonight's show. 614 Again, 646-915-8020. And I look forward to hearing from anybody and tell me your stories and your experiences and let's share. That's the whole purpose is for us to share. Yeah, we had Jay on the line a minute ago, but he dropped. I'm not sure what happened there, so we'll have to see if he calls back in. Okay, no problem then. So let's just say, uh, so that's what was my main concern and was really trying to get that out, like for the whistleblowers and and anybody that fears the power to be, you know, they don't want you, they don't want you dead <laughs> if you master the other side and if you realize how you can manipulate the astral plane because you're, you have unlimited time. <laughs> you can manifest anything you want. We're just a, a flea bite on this plane, but over there we are the foot stepping on the roach over there. So they're not going to want you dead. You know, and you won't even feel that you won't even feel that threat because you won't have that fear. That's what they rule us. They rule us every every way possible on this plane by fear, fear of losing our things, fear of of, of being of dying, fear of being away from our family, fear of not having enough money to eat, fear of your neighbors next door. Everything on this three D plane is fear. And once you start having your outer body experiences, you realize that all that stuff doesn't matter. It really doesn't. And when, you, when, you, when you're able to manifest things on that side and bring them over, that fear will be soon removed. And that's what I wish, you know, my wish for everybody in the world is to wake up, you know, we all think we're awakened, but no, wake up to your real, true spiritual self and and take the time and effort to start and learn how to astral travel. I don't suggest you get in these expensive kits and books. And There's so many frauds out there that, that will sell you anything if you let them. It's not that hard. Those, those little clues I gave you, you know, just as you have the weekend off, take that. Try to stay up as late as possible, you know, to, to daybreak. Or you can go to sleep, but just wake yourself up at 3 o'clock, set your alarm, and then go back to sleep. And you'll realize after doing that a few times, you'll feel that fall-in, zoom-in effect. And next thing, you'll have your own experiences. And it's a beautiful thing. And I always, I, that's what my goal always is, is to create an army interdimensional warriors to kick some dimensional ass. That's my goal. And as many of us wake up, all these fears and all this fighting and all this death and dying and power struggles will be ceased because it won't matter. That's what, that's what they're banking on is our fears, our fears of the unknown, our fears of losing. Everything. That's what they're banking on. When you see them on the other side, they'll attack you physically. You could hurt them. 
but you just zoom in and go somewhere else. You know, you don't have to engage in them. So they become a non-factor. And that's my main, my main, my really main spill I keep rambling on today about. But I always tell you guys my experiences, and I would love to hear your guys' experiences. And I think we have a caller on the on the line. Do we have a caller? Hello? Is anybody there? Yep, um, we have a caller. I'll bring them in. Hey, you. Caller, what's your name? Hello. Hello. Three, three, six, Am I on? Yep. What's your name, sir? I'm Wes. Hi, Wes. Hey, Retta. How's everything? What's going on? Oh, it's going good. Um, I've just been listening to what you're saying, and, I, and I'm really feeling what you're saying, and it's pretty awesome. You know, I had, like, we talked the other night, I think it was last night, I had a breakthrough. And tell, it was... Tell what happened, what you can share. Well, it, was, it, it was different. I mean, first of all, it was an experience like I've never had before, and it was re it's really hard to describe. However, I'll describe how I got there to start with. How's that? Yeah. You know how you keep talking about you're falling? Well, it's almost like a fear thing hits you like you're, like you're actually falling. You know, you, it's not, yeah. you're like your stomach comes up to your chest almost. Well, that happened, but I didn't get afraid, and all of a sudden it was like I just went zoom, and I was somewhere else. It was just that fast. And, and what I asked for was to see the truth, and, and I saw some stuff that, it blew my mind. And I'll be honest with you, and I, I, I can't remember a lot of it because I didn't have my journal with me to write it down, and, and uh, that was my mistake. But I told myself I was going to remember as much as I could. And actually, in talking to you last night, a lot of it came back to my memory that I had forgot previously. And we talked about that. And, and as we were talking, more and more came back. But really what it was was I ended up in a place where I was it was like a complex, the best way. I don't know if it was a ship or whatever, because that's still vague in my memory, but it was some kind of structure. And I was going from area to area. It was almost like a laboratory or a factory or something. I can't really describe it, because, like I said, that part's vague. But there are individual work areas there. And everybody was doing their individual jobs. And the thing about it is they didn't look like aliens. They looked like us. I mean, the people, the entities that I saw looked just like human beings, but they didn't feel like human beings. Uh, the, the, reson, the resonant frequency or feeling or vibrations I was getting from them was like alien darkness, you know, nefarious intentions or whatever. It was kind of weird. And they, know, they knew I was there. They didn't attack me right off. They just kind of ignored me. You know, they acknowledged me, they looked at me, they didn't nod at me or nothing like that. They knew I was there, but I had a guide who took me there and just kind of planted me in there. <laughs> it's really strange. I never saw my guide. It was like I just knew that the guide was there and just took me to this place and said, here, you want to see what's going on? Here it is. And I would just, like, move from compartment to compartment, and I realized what was going on. It was just like how the world leaders today work. You know, they keep people compartmentalized and only people know their job and not what the big picture is. And I, mm -hmm. think that's how, I think that's how they're working on a lot of levels, too. You know, because I think that they're actually taking their influence and actually invading into human hosts, and, and whether it's by the, the will of the human being or whatever. They're getting in people and they're using them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, they, I mean, in order... For them to use a human host, the human host has to be, has to allow them to. Well, the strange, and that's true, and the strange part about it is they were making some kind of machine. And the closer I got to, to see it, and I, I, I kind of got swept back and I was looking at the overall plan, and it all fit together. Like, you ever see that movie, A Beautiful Mind, where the stuff started flashing on the screen and all of a sudden all the patterns started to fit? Yes. It was kind of like that. I was looking, and all of a sudden, it all made sense what they were doing. They were making a machine to control human beings, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, and then when I realized that, they, then they took notice of me because they realized I'd 
caught on to what they were doing, and then they started to come for me. But I didn't engage them. I just, like, got out of there real quick. I just left. I just went somewhere. Actually, I woke up. Um, so I have a question for you. How how did how how did you feel on the astral plane? I want so I want your I, I've told people my experience, but did you feel like you had a physical body? Oh yeah, I, I felt just like I would if I was walking around in the daylight right now. Yeah, and the you things know, around just, you did it, it look was, like like pardon? a regular? Well, actually, I never really looked at myself. I was paying more attention to what was going on around me. But as far as my consciousness was concerned, I, it was me, you know, whether it was in my physical body or not, which it obviously wasn't, it still felt like me. So, I mean, I can't, I, like I said, I never did stop back and take a, take a look at myself in a mirror or anything like that. I didn't do that. There wasn't none around for me to look at. And I actually wasn't even thinking. I was just so much in awe and shock about what I was seeing because I was like, oh, wow. You know, either I'm having a really bad dream or this is really real. And no, I, and it's I started, really real. And I, and I started seeing it's like all, all the stuff started fitting in my mind how, how they're using it. They're, they're using this machine. It's actually the matrix, but it's not like we're plugged into it like with microbes. We're plugged into it by vibrationally. You know, and they use sound frequencies and thought images and all that kind of stuff to keep us plugged into it. And we don't realize that in our waking hours, that's what they're doing. So but when, when they was, attacked like, you, how did they attack you? Did they attack they you just, physically they, or? Well, they tried to. They just like, when they saw me, they were kind of, the best way I can describe them is like, they, looked, they were like the board, but they looked like people. But I could tell they were just like, not really people. They are I don't know how you describe them, holograms of people or body snatchers or whatever. But when they when they tried to attack me, they just started when they when they recognized that I saw the whole big picture, they just kinda of rushed towards me. And I just got out of there. And it wasn't because I was scared. It was just like, you know, just didn't see no reason to hang around anymore. You know, I, I was showing what I needed to see and it was time to go. You know? Yeah. So And, and that but, that's like I say you don't have to engage with them. You can just take that information like you're doing and bringing it back, trying to memorize as much as you're possible and, and absorb your surroundings and bring it back to this reality so you don't forget. <laughs> and Yeah, yeah. And, you know, something you said earlier, really, it brought back another little memory to me about, about why, you know, I, I'm pretty much a nonviolent pacifist type person. I will defend if necessary, like if my life is threatened or, you know, if it's really coming down to the wire, but I would, I would dread to have to do that. And you're talking about, you know, we could squash them like bonds, which we could. I mean, it wouldn't be nothing to it, but that would put us no better than what they are. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. You know, so and, I, just, you know, and them just knowing, and you agitated them, and them just knowing that you can go in and out, and they can't do nothing, that's more damaging, and that's more a threat to them than us on this plane. Do you see the difference, how I say we're more of a threat over there? Oh yeah, because what they're over to here. Do, see, they're locked. They're locked down here. They're 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 bound here. They can't escape. This is their prison planet, not ours. And they're trying to make it ours. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Mother Earth and all that good stuff. But I'm not talking about the Earth. I'm talking about what they've created for themselves in that realm that they live in, that's around the Earth. Yeah. You know what and I'm talking about. There. They're stuck, and they want, and they're using us for their, they're draining our life energy to keep them moving, doing what they're doing. So they're like, like, I'm asking, they're like vampires. I'm, they're like vampires. <laughs> yeah. So Wes, I'm asking you, do you feel now that you had this experience and you and you've come into yourself a little bit, and now that you're on this side, do you feel a little bit more, you know? I don't want to say powerful, but do you feel like you can walk a little straighter and yeah, I, I feel, I feel more scared? confident. I feel, I, I feel more confident in what's going on in the world, realizing that a lot of us just been crap pulled behind the strings, and not just by the New World Order, because those folks are being manipulated. Like I said, some of them by will, some of them are, don't even know they're being manipulated. Some of them are doing it on purposely, deliberately, because they think they're going to get something out of it, but what they're really doing is enslaving themselves to that system. But it's a, it's a last desperate effort for them because they know 
that the ship is coming. You know, when we go through the equatorial plane, it's going to be a mm-hmm. strange, strange time. And I think that's why this big push, that's why more and more people are, are learning how to, like, doing what you're doing to help people get into the astral realm so that when it happens, they'll be ready for it. Yeah. You know? And and that's, that's what I hold, you know, my whole perception and, and what I want to teach people and want to share. I mean, this is all a learning experience. You know, we're on this, uh, this earth existence right now, and this is all we need to learn from each other and share. And we, everybody's, you know, wanting to fight and kill the powers to be and this and that, but you don't even need to do that. Once you come, just like you did, um, Wes, let's say a thousand people tomorrow go to sleep tonight and astral project in their plane and realize their true self and that they can manifest and create anything in that plane and that these beings don't mean nothing. How powerful do you think that that will translate on this plane? Uh, uh, very much so, and also I think it terrifies them, but at the same time the fact that that those of us who choose not to, to engage them in the aggressive violence and, and negativity and darkness that they're trying to impose on us, it actually will help bring some of them across to a higher level because I don't think all of them want to be where they are. They're just stuck. Yeah, you know what, like I, you know what I, I mean? was saying in the beginning of the – I was saying in the beginning of the field, some of them – it, they took that gene. There's two stories going. That one, that some of these grays and reptilians and stuff like that had felt that uh, their emotional and spiritual side wasn't important. So they kind of took that out of themselves and bit, um, built their whole existence on the intellectual field. And... Then after they've done it, they're like, holy crap, what was the point of that? Because in order to be God that we are, you have to have that spiritual and uh, emotional side. Yeah, you've got to be both left and right brain. You can't can't be just pure logic or pure emotion. You've got to have that balance there. Yeah. I I, I want to thank you. For, for sharing it. And what time What time in the morning did this happen for you? Uh, it was about 4 or 4.30 in the morning, something like that. I, I, had, I went to bed earlier that night. With, I was actually meditating with crystals in my hands, and I fell asleep. And um, I woke up about 4.30, and I'm like, okay, well, let's see. Let's, let's just see. Cause it's about that time. So I just laid myself back on my side and said, I want to see the truth, and just kind of closed my eyes, and I felt that little fall, and there I went. Well, yeah, that's awesome. And and that's, like, that little time frame between 3 and 7 is the best time to, to try to astral project. And did you realize on that plane that you can base, you said you had a guide, and you said yeah, you Yeah, actually really- I did. I, I asked for one. Actually, I yeah. asked for a guide. And did you realize, it's, it's funny how your perception is on the astral plane, did you feel like you, you didn't have to ask certain questions? You already knew the answers to the questions. Oh, yeah, questions. it was like every, everything that I was seeing, it was almost like empathic or how, intuitive or however you want to say it. It's like there wasn't no spoken words at all, period, none. Through the whole okay. entire thing. Well, thank you for sharing, Wes. I appreciate it. And happy travels, and welcome to my army of internet dimensional warriors. I look forward to seeing you on this side and on the next. All right, Rada, thank you. Good night and God bless. Same here. Do we have another caller? Yeah, we got a caller from the 405 area code. Hi, 405. Who am I speaking to? Hi, Rada. This is the Involved Observer. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm doing well. What can I help how are you? you? You haven't I'm I'm doing good today. I'm doing good. Well how's Hawaii? Got... Hawaii. Hawaii was beautiful. Um, you know, I'm back on the mainland. I've been back on the mainland for um, you know, a few weeks now and actually just arrived back in my home state of Oklahoma recently and just sort of resting up and recharging for the next leg of the journey. 
Well, that sounds good. <laughs> that sounds like you're on the plan there. You have any questions or any experiences to share with me or us? Well, um, sure. I mean, endless experiences, you know. Um, well, when we're talking about astral travel, you know, the, the interesting thing that comes to mind is, see, uh, you know, a few months ago when I was up in the Philadelphia area, you know, I dropped in to the art corner and hung out with the Metasabians up there, uh, you know, Bruce, Gene, and D.L. Yes, love and, them. Uh, yeah, aren't they great characters? <laughs> yeah. um, they're amazing. And so we were we were all hanging out in their art corner for a while, and... You know, we got to sitting around and uh, we were watching Spirit Science uh, YouTube film. Have, have you seen the videos um, of, of Spirit Science on YouTube? No. Is that on TV or is that a DVD or something? No, it's on it's on YouTube. And there's this animated character who comes up like behind a podium, and you know the podium has a flower of life drawn on it, and um, this character is it's, an animated character who, you know, quickly in a matter of like 10 minutes just drops all this knowledge about ancient Egypt and about, you know, you know, crop circles and the relation to sacred geometry and, you know, all different aspects of, you know, the uh, consciousness and, the, you know, the awakening and healing process that's going on on the planet and everything. Mm hmm so, it, you know, it's an amazing YouTube series, but, but anyway, we were all just sitting around in the art corner watching it, and we had this amazing experience where we just all sort of became um, in tune with each other, and it was as if we were perceptive of each other's thoughts, it, and, like, we would, like, look at each other in such a way that we would know just what was going on inside of each other's heads, and it's like we were all having the same thought process at the same time, and, you know, no words necessary. Wow. You know? Just, just you know, <laughs> ultimate resonance where, you know, words, you know, just there was no need for words because we, we were in tune with each other. And, you know, for a period of like five or six minutes, we were just, you know, experiencing this um, collective oneness. And, you know, I've, I've experienced that a few times since. And, and you know, that just, that just seems to indicate that there are higher levels of communication, um, you know, which transcend... Uh, words, and, and, you know, I just thought I'd run that by and share that experience with you and see what you thought. Well, thank you for sharing, and that's one thing um, that that I have experienced since um, doing more and more astral projection and results is that you do become psychically more um, conscious of it, and you become more synced to people. Um, I found it sometimes it's very overwhelming where if I'm talking to somebody enough and even on the computer, it doesn't even have to be on a, a, a face to face, you know, talk, even on the computer just chatting, I become psychically in sync with them. Mm -hmm. And uh <laughs> it really happens. Sometimes I'll go to sleep that night and wake up in their body or um, wake up in their house. Or not that I want to, but it just that's how in sync they, be, they become. I have their feelings. You know, if they're sad, I, have to, I, I get that emotion. And I'm just now learning how to separate myself from those emotions because sometimes they can be very overwhelming. Mm, they can, and, can't they? Yes, they can, and sometimes it causes you to shut down a little bit, but that's one of the things I'm mastering is trying to separate and and turn that part of me off a little bit, keep it open, but just to turn, wind it down a little bit so their feelings don't become mine. Right. Yeah, and, and that's the interesting thing about being empathetic is that when we, you know, open ourselves up to the, um, you know, the the field of the, the resonant field, then we, you know, can actually lose our own vibrational signature and, and kind of take on the vibrational signature of our environment. And, um, and, and that's a tricky thing because then we can get carried away, like lost in the ethers, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and so the, that's... the important thing seems ahead, to be Brian. to maintain a, a sense of center and, and, you know, then be able to, you know, like circulate, you know, go, go out and, um, you know, feel, 
you know, get out to the edge of that uh, resonant field and, and be able to, um, you know, go, go out there and resonate with the field, but then be able to come back and, and find a point in, in the center of your own self that you can maintain a center and, and kind of have a sense of grounding. And you know what? This actually brings me back to the, to the point that I was making because, you know, I've been traveling for, you know, about 10 months, I guess, mm -hmm. just out on, the, out on the road meeting up with all sorts of different people. And I've just kind of thrown myself at my environment and just allowed myself to, you know, stay with uh, different people for a few periods, of, for a few days at a time. And then, you know, after a few days staying with one person, I'll go and stay with someone else for a few days. I've been doing this for a few months, for several months now, you know, I... I can really find myself immediately becoming the environment that I get into. Uh, because, you know, without having a home, without having a sense of grounding, without being grounded, in a sense, then, you know, we're a lot more susceptible, a lot more prone to being picked up and taken away on that, um, on, on that other wavelength. You know, we enter someone else's world and almost become them to a degree. Yes, and one of my... I suggest, you know, every couple of days to, you know, clear, try to clear, uh, clear your um, epic coating with some sage or a clearing ritual or something like that. Because sometimes it can, it's like it's layer upon layer upon layer, and it, it makes your etheric field a little dirty. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> you know, and it's great for higher level communication in the moment when we're actually there with them, you know, to, to be in sync with each other. It allows us to be able to communicate with each other in, in a higher way. But once we leave, um, you know, it's important to integrate aspects of that person, but we want to make sure that we're reestablishing our own center point. Very true. That Yeah, I suggest we you save yourself or mm -hmm. uh, you can message me and I'll give you a, a ritual you know, a cleansing ritual, or you can even take a bath in the cleansing bath to try to clear that out. That's what I'm trying to learn now is to, you know, clear it out and, and keep going because I do love being connected with other people, you know, but sometimes it's, it, it can be overwhelming. So I see where you're coming from, but you definitely have to, you know, especially since you're going from this place to that place, you definitely have to do a cleanse on yourself. Mm, so you don't want to you know. bring all that stuff that those vibrations of everybody to each other's house because you can leave some vibrations in other people's houses too on your travels. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, well, thanks for thing. calling in. Thank I you. Um, it. Yeah, let, let me just say one more word about thing. Happy birthday. Happy birthday and, this week. Oh, yes. Happy oh, birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you. Carolyn uh, and you. Mm, appreciate that. Thank you. You said and, uh, you had one more time. Yeah, I, I just wanted to relay a thought because um, this also relates to uh, what we were just discussing. Um, you know, I was I was just sitting here back in Oklahoma, and I came back here for a couple of weeks to do that very thing, to just ground out, cleanse, um, you know, reestablish my own point of center and establish a, a sense of grounding. And then now, in the next few days, I'm going to be hitting the road again and, you know, getting on the next leg of the, the journey and continue traveling. And so it was interesting because I just got a message from Sonic on Skype, and he, he suggested that I call in. And this happened at just the moment that I was, I, I was sharing, um, I, I was just sharing with a friend of mine that I am looking to start capturing some audio and video for the uh, during the next leg of the journey so that I can, you know, have some footage of the people that I meet up with, you know, interview some of the people that I meet up with and, and have some content for the website and everything like that. And, you know, so I had just been talking to Freighter, Freighter X. I had just been talking to Freighter about getting on and starting a radio channel, you know, getting getting a time slot to have a radio show of my own. And right at this moment, you know, it's not, not, a few minutes later, Sonic messages me and suggests that I come on this radio show to talk about what I've been up to. So I take yes, that as an indicator to, to share all of that.
Well, thank you. Thank you. And we've all missed you. I think I've been uh, on your page saying, where are you? We miss you. So I'm, I, I, I thank you for calling in. Well, thank you, you know, and, and I, I saw that message and I thought I'd, you know, check in with you and, and, and call into your show and, um, and just let everyone know that I'm going to uh, be getting, you know, audio and video interviews of, of some of the people that I'm traveling around, meeting up with people involved in free energy, permaculture, sustainability, intentional community, you know, and, and all these people that are the forefront of their respective fields, you know, just kind of bring them on and, and share some of what they're doing with everybody. So, you know, That's keep an eye out for awesome. that. Well, if you hit the East Coast, let us all know. I think there's a few of us over here on the East Coast. Yeah, you know, I checked in with a few of uh, the Friends of Freeman on the, on the East Coast when I was there a few months ago, and uh, I want to continue to do so, you know, just going to keep on circulating and meeting up, being where I need to be when I need to be there. So I'll, I look forward to meeting you all. And I look forward to meeting you. Well, it's been good talking with you, Retta. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on. Thank you. Do we have another caller? Yeah, looks like we have uh, Jay on the line. Hi, Jay. Uh, hi. Uh, there's an easy way to get centered and grounded. Basically, you ground yourself to the earth, but the easiest way to you have to get centered first is do something that makes you smile. That'll that'll get you out of your head and into your heart. Your heart center is the center of your being. And that will help. That will help well, ground me and. and Right, and it'll help you laugh, lighten up as well, and not take it seriously because it, it, it's just a game to begin with. Yeah, it's all it's it's a big go, it's a big game on all sides. Mhm. Mm yeah. Well, well, thank you, Jay. I'll try that. Okay. Sometimes it does get overwhelming for me, you know. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'll I'll try that, and I suggest everybody, you know cleanse yourself often with some rituals uh, and even do the, uh, the suggestion that Jay just said um, because when we meet other people we kind of you know join with them and get their frequency and vibration with us and it, sometimes it's hard to wash off and it helps everywhere be at, at it, it um, the earth will help you in you know once you get in your body you can send the energy to the core of the earth and let it bounce back into you. It'll be refreshed and clean. Well, thank you, Jay. You're welcome. Yeah, and that's one thing, too, when you go on the astral plane, you're going to come more psychically in tune. And it's a great way. You're going to start trusting your own instincts and, and um reflexes and and everything because you have this more of a sixth sense um, uh, than you would otherwise. And I was happy for, you know, Wes to call in and tell me experiences. I wish more people will. So I'm sure you guys are getting bored with my experiences. <laughs> and I think it's an open exchange for me to hear you and share it with the listeners and vice versa so we can all learn, you know, uh, different ways and different encounters, you know. So when you're on the astral plane, you know, there's all types of things to do. It's as far as your imagination allows you to do. So some things people can do that I can't do. And I will learn, you know, there are techniques, that, and it's a wonderful, and this time it's a wonderful uh, way to, to talk to each other and exchange information because this is a learning time. And uh, I was very thankful for Wes to, to call in with his story because it was so personal. And a lot of people, I had a comment on, my, um, on one of my pages saying that it's hard for me, the, the gentleman was saying it was hard for him to talk about it because it's such a personal experience. And I'm like, no, I understand it's personal, but it, you, have to, you have to talk about it. You have to share. Uh, this is the time you know, to share it and let everybody know because we can't keep this to ourselves. I can't keep this feeling to myself, you know, and this little bit of knowledge that I have on the astral plane. I want everybody to have it. And if you don't trust my observation of the moon, you can go there. You know, the proof is in the pudding. 
you don't have to you don't have to listen and trust what I say. You can do it and you can see for yourself. You don't have to trust anything anybody says. You go visit it yourself and see what you feel and what you see because each experiences on the astral plane is different. And Wes brought in another good subject that he asked a guide, you know, he, he wanted a guide to be with him. And you can ask for that. You can. You can ask for a guide. And if you're wary, you can ask you can ask for me. You can say, Retta, can you help me on this journey while you're in astral plane or going there? And my spirit, you know, will come and help you, you know? Who knows? I could have been Wes's guide last night. I don't know. But don't be afraid of it. And, and just an army of just a thousand people waking it up and exploring the astral plane and coming into their own, oh, my God, it would manifest, oh, 200 fold on this plane and that that's really that's what that's what these powers to be are scared of they're scared of you realizing how powerful you truly are and we all say that oh you're powerful and people are listening like yeah they keep saying it but i don't feel that powerful just do these easy steps try it on your days off you know uh when you have a couple of you know days off or if you're not just try it a couple of times. Try to wake yourself in the middle of the night and 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 uh, go back to sleep or stay up as late as possible till daybreak, you know, so that you can start mastering this because this is needed. Uh, this, is, this is going to be our reality soon. Thoughts are going to be manifested, you know, and we really have to come into our own because that's where we're going towards, you know, the earth is moving on. She's graduated, and it's up to us to, to join her with her graduation process because she's going to go whether we uh, wake up or not, and it's not that hard. It doesn't cost you anything. It's a free. It, it's, it's the only thing in the world that's completely free, <laughs> you know, that you just go to sleep and and and. Wonderful, wonderful things will happen. There's a world in the astral plane that's ever, it's never ending, and there's so many possibilities. You can see the fairies. You can see, if you wanted to see the greats, you can see the greys. If you wanted to see the reptilians, you can see the reptilians. Anything's possible. People keep saying, well, Retta, why don't you go to the underground bases and stuff like that? It's so funny. It's because once you have the ability to do these things, it it doesn't matter what the powers to be are doing. It really doesn't. I have no interest going down there. I already know on this plane what they're doing. I don't have to see it with my eyes. I have that. I know what's going down there. So, I've got a question. I've got yeah. a question. So, Sonic here. Um, I thought... Hello there, little baby. You caught me on the ramp, and I was just rambling on there. Yeah. Well... It's your show. Um, I've got, um, instead of uh, maybe going to all these, um, you know, negative energies of the greys and the um, and the uh, reptilian, uh, why not um, uh, go to um, the pure ones, the Buddhas? You can. You that that's the amazing thing. You could go and see whoever you want. I say the grace because most people are like, oh, they don't really believe, you know, that they are, you know, that they're really real or something. You don't have to trust me. You could go and see it yourself. That was the point. You can see uh, energetic being. You can see whoever you want to see. You can see. Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, I lost the I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, no. You were saying something. Um, um, yeah, well, we, um, all these different realms yeah, uh, that we inhabit, um, you know, like uh, where we were saying before that he, um, he had a, uh, a guide there, and uh, mm -hmm. maybe the guide is just another manifestation of um, his being. Mm -hmm. Just putting it out. I mean, it could be. 
it could be anything is possible, or it could be, you know, guys, anything is possible. Um, I think that if it was just a part of his being, he would know it. When, when it's not like on this plane. On that plane, you know, uh, you only have to ask questions certain things because you already know the answer. So, so if it was his higher self, he would probably know it was his higher self. Well, well in, in a um, in a uh, one sense, um, we are all parts of self. Yeah. I didn't hear your last. No. My uh, it's breaking so, up a little bit. Sorry. Um, said that uh, in the sense of oneness, that we are all part of self, and the uh, so you are me, and I am you, and you are Wes, and uh, Wes is his guide, and we're all. Both and the universe is one consciousness. Yeah, I um I see I can see where um you're going there. Yeah. I, I maybe that's the feeling of the all knowing is that we're all consciousness. Where when you are on that side, you you know you don't really have questions because you already know it. Um, yeah, and, and maybe and maybe. This, this process of um, of uh, projecting is a, a tool that uh, we can establish to um, to gain that understanding of our self and the oneness of self in uh, yeah. in a dimensional sense. Yeah, you can. When you're when you're there, if you want to go into the philosophical uh, philosophy of, of a way of thought, you can go there. You know, there's there people there. There's things. It's all it's, you create your reality. So if you want to go and learn about uh, something more or higher, have a higher being, learn how to to raise your vibrations or or raise this. Or that, or, or or there's guides over there. You can ask for a guide, and they can show you, and and you can take. They can sh uh, take you to somewhat like a class or something where you can learn how to do different things manifested over here. It's just so strange when people ask me these questions. Like here, we're we're always talking about on this plane. <laughs> we're always talking about consciousness and uh and consciousness and being one is so strange because when you're on that plane you don't even think like that it's not even like not in your th fourth but it's just like you already know you don't even think how can i be one with the world because on that plane you already know so it's kind of strange that to 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 talk to somebody who who hasn't had the full experience of on that plane because we talk about the one consciousness and you know being one here but on the on that plane it's just totally different you are you are the one <laughs> you know you are the one yeah. so it's it's strange sometimes yeah, so I, I try to yeah. And I want you to, Sonic, when you, especially hopefully this weekend, you'll wear yourself back having such a good time that you'll be exhausted and you'll have some astral travels this weekend. Hopefully. It should be a very good uh, experience <laughs> yeah. there. Uh, yeah, just a little I, I plug before so. uh, go up. Uh, type 1 is live and direct uh, from the Eternal Knowledge Festival. Uh, Saturday night, 9 p.m., uh, 4 p.m., Eastern or Central. Um, yeah, well, just check I'll out the page. There. I'll be there. Huh? And, and uh, what did you happy astral travel. Oh, okay. You were breaking up my phone line on this. I don't know if it's my line or... It's kind of breaking up a little bit, but I'm trying to listen, but it, 
because I'm getting just the bits and pieces of the words. So I'm trying to, so I'm sorry if the, the answer was as good as it could be because I could only get bits and pieces. For some reason, we're, we're having storms over here in Albany, and uh, it's, every time we have a storm, it, it throws down my uh, computer link pretty good. It kind of makes everything staticky. But, and what's the difference of, of a lot of, I was just thinking too earlier, is, you know, a lot of us die without knowing about the astral plane or not knowing um, what it is and how to move on. So they kind of, people get stuck on the astral plane, you know. Even um, real, like, whistleblowers that passed on, you know, they could if they if they pass on with the knowledge of these astral planes, they'll be given those those little nasty beings on the fourth dimension to run for their money. You see, a lot of people are, are are passing away, and they don't have they're not have to have this knowledge of the astral plane, and they're still holding on to the three D reality. You know, uh, and you know, even on the astral plane, when you explore, some people still think of the 3D reality I did in the beginning when I started astral projecting because other beings would physically attack me. And I was fighting back physically. And I was, until I realized, I don't even have to fight these. If I really wanted them to go, all I had to do was think of a thought, a thought and they'll be gone or I could do a bomb or something. So even though you, that's what, my whole program is, too, is when you get to the other side, what do you do? How do you know how to work it? It's just by thought. Like Wes was saying, we were chasing him. He didn't have to engage them. He just left. We have that power. They don't have that power. They're still in their spacesuits over there. We're in our spacesuits over here. And when you realize that they don't really have any power, then they're not too scary anymore. They're not scary. They don't become a factor. And it's funny, a lot of people, on this plane, the oneness and the consciousness is very important for us to embrace each other and have that connection. But when you're on the astral plane, the oneness and uh, meditation on the astral plane and the consciousness it's already there, so you don't really think about it and focus on it. You know, you you focus on other things. And it can be distracting. The astral plane can be distracting because there's so much things to do that you can get lost in things to do. <laughs> you can get lost in a lot of things. So if you feel that you want to become more centered, more in tune with the world, when you astral act, for that, the thought. As soon as you ask Joe, say I want it more in tune with the world, and see what shows up. You know, or if you want to speak to Mother Goddess, you can do that. You can go to Mother Goddess and 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 have a conversation with her. You know, you can you can go to any any thought that you have, any space and time. Here we go to the remote view. Um, you can go into any time that you want. You just have to really observe what's around you to kind of place it because time is important on the other side as here. We have we are bombarded by time. We're we have time to eat at certain times, go to work at certain times. Time is involved. The clock is involved in every aspect of our life on, on this plane. But any other point, there's a the thing of yeah. yeah. Can I interject there? Um, the, uh, the 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 guy that we had on on Sunday, uh, John Diodi, who was staying at, with um, Stephen Fychik, uh this week, he had a very interesting point to make about time. Ta so time. We have, yes? Yeah. To counteract time, we need to reverse that, yeah? And not uh, go with time. We just need to omit. So, and omit is time backwards. 
instead of watching the clock, we emit our being. Yeah? Uh-huh. And, and, I'm trying to... And, 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 go on. So, so, um, so, so in a sense, in, in a sense, time is actually irrelevant um, and we, we're, because we're omitting, um, we can access all the parts of this reality and all the realities. We just sort of, we admit to the point of, of the, the bit that we want to um, access and then admit there. And, and, right. and I think that's so, maybe the, the, the process of, of um, astral projection. We're, um, we're just uh, we're focusing our, our energies on um, a specific, a specific uh, point, location, and accessing that reality. We're on the astral plane? Or are you saying that we are... Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So well, it doesn't matter I, whether it's I, I, on this plane or I'm the, the astral about, Maybe because I'm, I'm not hearing you correctly because it's breaking up. I don't know if I'm breaking up. But, um, I was speaking, but you're breaking up. I can only hear bits and pieces. But you were saying something about time, um, about thinking, reversing time on this plane. I, you know, or you were projecting it back to the astral projection, where I don't know how the time on, there's no such thing as time there. Exactly, exactly, exactly. There's no such thing as time. We only emit. So, yeah, the only yeah, place so. where time is important is here on the three plane, and they did that on purpose. You know, it's part of our yeah. programming. Yeah. To be timed, so that kind of throws us okay. off. This clock throws us off. Okay, well maybe on that point, because um, we've got a minute forty-five left of the show. Uh, if you want to just have a wrap up and then and then. Uh, uh, All, right. Uh, All right, maybe next week we can pop. Um, Love you, Mister. Love you. As I as I was saying about the time, any other level, the time is not important. In order to know where you are on the ash plane or remote viewing, you have to really observe your surroundings, uh, what people look like, and um, and time, time that in the fact. Um, in fact, I'm sorry. Well, I I want to thank everybody for tuning in to the show. I appreciate all my listeners and my new friends that I'm in every day. And I really encourage everybody, drop me a line, ask me questions so I can bring it back to the show. Um, on my profile page on Friends of Freeman, um, drop me a line. And I'll save it for next week's show. I want to thank you guys, and God bless, and blessed be, and be blessed. Love you.